give them a hand clap of worship. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in Him. Are you glad to be alive and well in the kingdom of the Lord? Brother Vance, it's good to see you able to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. We pray a lot of prayers. I'm glad you're here today. Our God is a healer. Trina, wave your hand back there. Everybody look back there. Trina. A few months ago, we began to pray for Trina. Trina was on life support and they were, the doctors were saying, you need to pull the plug. It's over and done. Devil, just take a look at that right there. Uh, I think we got a right to pray for the Lord. Yeah. When we pray, we're not just giving words. We're not just bringing an offering to an idol that somebody comes and collects into a back room somewhere. I always wonder what people thought happened to those offerings they made to idols. That's not what we do when we praise God. When we bring our praise and worship, He receives it. The lifting of our hands is as the evening sacrifice and as sweet incense that arises. I think we could just send some praise up right now one more time. Come on, open up your mouth, give Him the fruit of your lips, which is the sacrifice of praise. We worship You, Jesus. We thank You today. For your blessing. Amen. 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 I saw Pastor Roberson, his lovely wife, slip in. Give them a big hand of welcome. Give honor to them. I know he's sitting by his girlfriend back there. He don't want to come join us on the platform, but we understand. If you have your Bible, let's go to Psalm 61. I love that song they just sang, Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Amen. That, that song was written. And when the psalmist wrote it, he gave a little note. He said, this is for the chief musician and the sons of Korah. He didn't want novices, but he said, don't, don't get the rookies to play this song. And if you know anything about your Bible history, the sons of Korah were the elite of the singers. They were those that they guarded the house of God because they had been orphaned. Remember when Korah, Nathan, and Abiram rose up against Moses' rebellion in their heart? They were the anointed uh, to stand before the congregation. The Bible says they were famous. And uh, they challenged Moses. They tried to get to another position of authority. And Moses looked at him and said, you guys, he said, you, you have thought little. You don't recognize your calling and your place. You've been anointed to stand before the congregation and minister. But you, you've missed it. And you've tried to get out of your position instead of recognizing the anointing you had. And you remember judgment came. The ground opened up, swallowed. Korah. His followers, but there's a little place later on. The scripture said, "The sons of Korah died not for no other reason except mercy." Everybody say mercy. mercy. For no other reason except mercy were they spared. And so, where did they go? They had nowhere to go, but they were of the Levitical tribe, and so they were brought into living near and around and in the things of God, the ministry of God. And those young men were raised spiritual orphans, but became a part of that Levitical group that protected the house of God. And, and biblical history and then post-history, Jewish history, says they guarded the house of God with a song in their lips and a sword in their hand. And he said, when you, when you write this song, he said, when you sing this song, he said, go get the best musician, the chief. Get, get the dude that can play all the chords in every key. And then go get those singers because they, if anybody can sing about one day's better in the house of God, because if you read that song, it talks about them to dwell in the tents of wickedness. They had seen, they, they, they talked about, the song talked about the sparrow hath found a nest. 
those orphans whose daddy's decisions had caused great pain and devastation to the family. The mercy of God spared them for whatever reason and gave them a place. No wonder he said, when, when they sing this song, get the sons of Corinth, that for mercy shouldn't be here. But they, how many feel that way? You found a place in the house of God for no other reason but the mercy of God. Amen. No wonder they were chosen to sing because if anybody knew what that song was about, it was them. And so that's a good prelude to a Psalm 61. I'm going to read all eight verses in your hearing. Hear my cry, O God. David said, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. And thou wilt prolong the king's, he's talking about himself, the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. I got to read that again. Prepare mercy. Everybody say prepare mercy. Prepare mercy. And truth. Which may preserve him. Then he wraps it up and says, So will I sing praise unto thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. I want to preach from this passage tonight, prepare for preservation. Prepare for preservation. You may be seated. Give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. Amen. The psalmist in 61 seems to be in a time of serious need in his personal life. There are other places where the psalmist would write of the dilemma of his people, other people that are included in the list of psalms that were included in the psaltery that we know as the psalms would write of national issues. But this particular psalm seems to be about the individual need of David himself, the king. And it speaks to us in our individual straits and circumstances and those enemies and oppositions that come into our lives. And there is discussion by Bible scholars about this particular text. Many seem to think that this was about David's personal need in dealing with the rebellion of his son, Absalom, while others say that this was the result of David's own mistakes. And I guess the debate will continue until we get to eternity and find out because the psalm does not tell us and there's really no one to ask at this point. Uh, but I think it may be fitting because sometimes we go through things that are done to us that bring about circumstances. What has been perpetrated against us causes things to happen to us. Then there are other times that we find ourselves in struggle and strife because of our own doing. Is there any honest folk that will raise their hand and say, I've gotten in the mess before because of me? So sometimes it's what happens to us by others, and then sometimes there's things that happen to us because of us. Thus we have phrases that kind of say uh, we're our own worst enemy at times. I'm not sure whether this was what was perpetrated against him or what he had done himself, but uh, whatever the situation, it's very clear that this is a time of serious need in his life. 
And David is at a point of desperation where there is real struggle. And he doesn't offer some little ritualistic prayer. He doesn't bring some little rote, memorized offering of worship. But he says from a point of desperation, Hear my cry, O oh God. Is there anybody that knows what it's like to get to the point where all you can do is cry out to God? I, I know we all got our little uh, breakfast prayer and our little lunch prayer. God bless the food we're about to partake of. And we got our little praise we do every Sunday night. And, oh, Jesus, 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 hallelujah, I love you, Lord. Praise God while we're checking the time until 7.30 or 6.30 to get through prayer. I, but I'm not talking about just going through the motions. Is there anybody that's here tonight that has ever been to the point where you got desperate with God because you were dealing with desperate circumstances? Now all you that just live on easy street, you just you just bring your little panic aid praise, but but there's some people that's in this room tonight, I got a feeling that you're at the point where you gotta get desperate with God. Oh, I got a feeling that's where David was when he said, Hear my cry. Feeling 
he feels goosebumps from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. If you think that you're smoking crack, <laughs> I will plainly and truthfully tell you there are times that I walk through that curtain onto that platform and I don't feel one ounce of the Holy Ghost. And there are times I lift my hands and don't feel one goosebump. And there are times I even dance and I don't feel one thing. You know what I'm doing? I'm making my cry known. I'm making my desperate position known. Why? Because I know I need God. I need God every day of my life. Whether I'm feeling, whether I'm sensing, that's not what it's about. It's about my need for you. Sometimes you got to make up your mind. I'm going to touch God even if he don't touch me. May be seated. He felt the sense of distance between God and himself. He felt separated from the holiness of God. There's probably pretty good indication that this was his own doing. There are things that we do. There are things that we say. There are places we go. Things we look at and talk about and participate in. That when we're done, we get away and we say, God, where are you? I feel like I'm a million miles away. And the devil loves to get in right there and tell you it's over. You're a hypocrite. You're never going to make it. Look how he described it. He said, from the ends of the earth, the end, I, I, I feel so, I feel so far away from you. Is there an honest person who raised their hand and says, I know that feeling? Just kind of wave it. You need to be a witness because somebody beside you, the devil's trying to make think you're the only person that's ever been there. I think we got 100% cooperation for that. <laughs> if you give up on God because he's given up on you, you're the first one. That's right. That's right. You ain't that important. You are not going to be the first one out of human history that God gave up on. You ain't that important. You ain't that tough. God is going to save you. God's going to help you. Don't believe the stinking lie of the devil. He's trying to tell you it's over. He's trying to tell you you ain't going to make it because you can't feel God. It ain't never been about what you feel, baby. It's all He didn't bring me this far to leave me. He didn't teach me to swim to let me drown. He didn't build his home and me to move away. He didn't lift me up to let me down. Put your hands and say, you're going to make it. 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 But we get to feeling so far. And he went further and he said, My heart is overwhelmed. That word literally means it's covered. My heart has been covered. I can't get any hope. I, I'm distant. I, I'm separated. And my heart has been covered. It's, it, it's, it's like Psalm uh, 73 uses the same word, but it, it doesn't say overwhelmed. It says it's covered with a garment. Psalm 65 said it's like covered of the planting of a field. It's like underneath is this heart, but over the top of it is a field that's been planted with corn or grain. As you can't even see what's down there. He said, that's the way my heart is. The psalmist said in 74, it's like a blanket of darkness that covers. And that's what happens when we, we feel separated. And either there's been enough hell come our way. Enough opposing forces are our own mistake. And sometimes we can't even identify what the mistake was or, or how we got there. Sometimes we just we just wake up in a funk. And that extends a week or two and before long it's six months. And we just feel like we're plodding through living for God. 
role on the Sunday school roster, but, but we don't even feel like we're saved. We don't even feel like we're, we, we just, we're just going through the motions. And it's like a blanket has been covered over her heart. Like a foggy darkness washes over and completely covers her. Our inner being. Notice what he says. Here's the key. He said, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I feel like I'm at the ends of the earth. And my heart has been covered over. But what are you going to do, David? Would you lead me? Notice he said, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. What he was really saying is that I can't get up there by myself. I need a leader. I need a guide because it's too lofty for me. It's too high for me. It's too holy for me. I've made some mistakes that have gotten me separated. And I've done some things that have allowed a cloud of darkness to bring division between God and his holiness. So would somebody get me by the hand and lift me? I try to get up on that rock. A wave of sin and a wave of destruction. I'm going to fail. I'm going to be destroyed unless I get He knew where to go. I've got to get up on top of that rock. I've got to get up out of these low lands. There's a flood coming and I've got somebody. Oh, I came to preach to you. I'm here to grab your hand and get you up on that rock. I don't care how far tonight seems. I don't care how far away you feel. Take this preacher's hand. Let's get
feathers. Just, just overshadow me. Because he's got drones up there looking. He's been searching. Where's he at? Where's she at? I heard what they've been doing. I heard what they said. And he's flying up. Where are they at? Where? He's the prince of the power of the air. And God's got his wings out. This is a covert. Everybody shout covert. Covert. Now, I like to read spy thrillers. I know it's not real spiritual. Sometimes I just like to read where somebody punches somebody. In. I'm sorry, I'm just kind of like that. I don't read romance novels. I like spy thrillers. And the ultimate spy thriller story is when. Is when. The spy. The spy makes the enemy think they're dead. And they think a car wreck. And they burn the body up and everybody thinks he's dead. And all the other opposing forces say, No! The wicked witch is dead! The wicked witch is dead! Sorry, that's another story. <laughs> and there's nothing like being dead, but yet alive. Because if they think they're dead, they quit looking for them. So you've been running from the cartel, and then they think you died, and you're living in Hawaii on the beach drinking pina colada. <laughs> Not a virgin pina colada.
You really think I'm stretching that? You, you really think that? Okay. Let's go to Psalm 37. Don't, don't stop. Keep playing. Amen. Go to Psalm 37. Verse 23. The steps of a good man. That word in your English says ordered, but it actually means appointed or prepared. The steps of a good man are prepared, ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. Talk about your way. God's taking pleasure out of working on your life. I'm just a loving God. I'm just not worth anything. He has to work on me so much. I'm not like all those other saints. I just struggle so bad. Let me tell you what. God specializes in projects just like you. He gets the light out of seeing the devil that's messed you up so bad and made you feel so separate. He loves to show up in your life and say, watch out, I'll work on that. I don't know if that's what, what, what he's talking about. Oh, really? You ain't read your Bible. Put the next verse up there. Though he fall. That's so much for your theology. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord. Well, I fell, yeah, but you didn't realize when you fell off that wagon, there was a hand that reached out and picked you up and put you back on the rock. And said, it's going to be okay, baby. You're going to make it. I'm here with you. He catches you. I know you make some mistakes. I know you fell. I know you had some bad decisions, but there's a God that ain't He's still walking back. He takes the light and it's catching. And that next verse up there. Not that one. Go to, go to, uh, he's ever, everybody say, ever merciful. Ever merciful. And lendeth, that's banker talk. Has anybody ever tried to borrow money and you didn't qualify?